I am sure you already know a lot about how to work with Finder. Some quick shortcuts like Command N, creating new folders and moving files around them. You also know how to use powerful searches, create smart folders, but there are still so many things to discover about Finder. In this video, I will show you some more extra tricks which might be useful for you. If you will learn something new in this video, leave me a like to let me know about it. So let's jump right into it. You probably first create a new folder. You go to File, New Folder or use the Command key shortcut. Once you have a new folder, you can move items in there. But you can also do it the opposite way. Select multiple items first. You can swipe over or hold the Command key down to select multiple files and then go to File, New Folder with Selection. That will create a new folder instantly and move all of these selected files into it. If you are very enthusiastic about this, you can learn the shortcut for it, which is similar to a normal folder. Just instead of Shift, you need to press Ctrl key. If you want to get information about the file, you can select it and use Command I. Or right click the item and press Get Info. If you want information about more files, you can select them and then press Get Info again. You will actually end up with multiple info windows open, one for each file. But if you don't want to have this many windows open, but still need to get info about many files, then you can use the inspector. You will open it by the key combination Option Command I. Just add Option key to it. It looks same as the Get Info window, except that it will remain on top and stay there even if you select the different file. So now I can select the different one and you can see it changes to show information about that new selected file. Now if you want to get a full path of a file, you can do it one of three ways. One way to do it is to hold the command key down and click on top of the window on the title here. That will give you a list going all the way up to the top level. You can also go to view and then show path bar and then see the path at the bottom of the window. You can also go to view and customize toolbar. Or you can simply right click it here and press customize. Then drag and drop the path button in the toolbar like that. Here you can click on it and get the full list here. Now let's say you want to navigate up a level. You can use this path button for it. There is another bar which we can add at the bottom as well. You can turn on show status bar. This will give you information like how many items are selected, how many items are in the current folder and the amount of space available on your drive. In addition, you get a handy little slider here that will allow you to change the size of the icons in the current view. This only works in the icon view, so it will go away if you switch to list view or column view. Next part is sorting. If you have a mess in the folder like I do, you can go to view and sort by and then choose from many options. As you can see, it is possible to use commands for that, but I'm using Mac for more than 10 years and never learned it. Yes, that's how much you need it. If you want to know the most useful shortcuts I use every day, go ahead and download my free cheat sheet, which you will find the link in the description of this video. Now back to sorting. As many times proven, this menu is good to use, but hell it's so far. Just right click inside the folder and you can choose the sorting method here. There is actually one more way how to do that in the list view. You can just simply press this little arrow and sort according to the category you need. As you might have noticed, right next to sorting was cleanup option. It works pretty much the same. I like to use this option at the desktop especially or in folders where I have many files sorted by different projects. But the names doesn't match it, so if I sort it by name, it would create a mess for me. So simply clean up to snap it to the grid. I just use this for aesthetic function. Now let's switch back to list view and we can play with these columns. If you have longer names, you can adjust it by dragging the line here at the top. But also I can double click it and it will snap to a perfect size for that column. You can also add more columns to it and have all information you want. As usual, right click is very powerful and simple. With one click, I can add any column I want or delete those I don't use.
If you want more options, use the right click here and press show view options. Note that we have accessed this menu from a list view, so we get different options than if I did it from the icon view. Not everybody knows how to use undo. When you are working on a document for example, you delete some text, then you can use undo to get the text back. But undo button works in the finder as well, for all sorts of different things. So I take this file and move it into this folder. I can now go to edit, undo or command Z and it will come back here to this level. I can do the same thing with renaming a file. I can rename it and decide that was a mistake. I can do command Z and undo the renaming. Even deleting a file can undo the action by pressing command Z. This is one of the most powerful functions and trust me, you will use it a lot. So I definitely recommend to learn this shortcut because it works not only in Finder, but in text editor and bunch of other applications. We are all familiar with the basic copy and paste function. So press command C, then you go to another location and use the shortcut command B. Very basic, but as I already mentioned in another videos, we don't have the command X function like we know from Windows. Or do we? Well, we can move the files. First you select your file, press copy combination command C, and then go to your destination folder and instead of pressing command V, add options button to it. It will move the files instead of copying. I didn't know about this function for many years using Mac. I was always copying and then deleting the original files manually. So take advantage of knowing it straight away. I already showed you an example of customizing the toolbar, but another way you can customize it is by adding files, folders or even apps to the toolbar. So for example, if I want to add this file to the toolbar, I can hold the command key down and drag it up here. You can see a plus button appears. If I put the file here, I can open it from wherever I am with a one click. If I want to remove it, I can command drag it all the way down and it will delete it. I could do the same with the folder. I can command drag the folder up there. Now I can be dropping things into that folder or click the folder once to actually go to that location. I prefer to put folders here on the sidebar, but again, it's up to you. I don't use this option much, but it's good to know about it. But what is handy is that you can also add applications to the toolbar. It might be very useful. Just go to applications folder to see all of your apps. Then pick up an app that you want to use for opening files. For example, I can pick VLC player. I hold the command key and drag it to the top and now it's there. I can open any file in VLC by dragging it to that icon in the toolbar. A lot of times things can get messy. We have different finder windows here open, but we can merge all of these into tabs by going to window and merge all windows. This puts all of the open finder windows into different tabs. So it's a good way to clean things up without closing any finder windows. Tabs can be used the other way too. Very useful is when you are copying files between them. So press the command T button and it will create a new tab. Now you probably know that if you go to column view, you get a preview window here on the right. So anything you select is then going to be previewed here. But you can get that in other views as well. For example, I can go to list view. Open the view menu on top and then select show preview. Now you can see that same preview here on the right. If you are looking at things in list view, you will notice that in the column size, it shows the numbers only for files. For folders, you don't see a size. You can turn it on by going to view and then show view options. Then there is a checkbox for calculator sizes. Once you turn it on, you will see all the sizes even for folders. So when you sort by size now, it will put the folders properly at their place according to their real size. You can delete files by dragging them to the trash or by using command delete shortcut. But sometimes you have big files you want to get rid completely by skipping the bin. There is a way. You can skip the trash by using option key. You can see it here in the file menu. Open it up and here is move to trash. But if I hold down the option key down, 
that changes to delete immediately. So option command delete will delete that file immediately skipping the trash. Especially useful if you are deleting a large file and you don't want it to hang around in the bin and still take the storage. Well, we are always looking for ways to differentiate files and folders from each other. A handy way to do is to use emojis in file names because you can use any characters you want here. And normally you use regular letters and numbers. But I can also use Ctrl Command Space shortcut to bring up the emoji viewer and add any emoji I want to this folder. Actually if you have a touch bar on your Mac, the emojis will appear there. So now for example I can search for something that makes sense like a speaker icon for audio files or picture emoji for photos. Now it makes it a little bit easier to find that folder and I can do that with all my folders and files I want. One last tip here, a lot of us forget that we have items in the trash. We'll throw items away but the trash ends up filling up and our hard drive runs out of space. You can set up the trash so that when the files have been there in 30 days, they'll be deleted automatically. So go into find the preferences and then go to advanced. There is an option here to remove items from the trash after 30 days. This is definitely something I use. It still gives you a safety buffer of 30 days for anything you put into the trash and you want to undo it, maybe it was deleted by mistake. But it also means that you don't have to remember to empty the trash. So I hope you enjoyed these tips and I will see you in the next video.